Hi, this is Raina. Thank you for joining me on my crochet channel. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you my new uh, laptop bag and how to crochet it. Um, and I designed it. It's my original. And uh, there's uh, quite a lot to learn here. So I hope uh, this tutorial is uh, fun and helpful to you. So let's see. Uh, the bag has this nice uh, bottom, the first few rounds uh, with the stitches create the space for the bottom. And then um, the bag body is made with basket weave stitch. And then I'm going to show you two options to do the edge for those two types of handles you see here. These ones are... I created these uh, handle holes so you can insert the handles through. These are adjustable. I ordered them online. I think they look really great and that's the easier option. And the blue one, I didn't need the holes because I stitched the handles on the back. And that was a little bit more challenging to do but it looks great too. And then we'll do the button loop and so on the button. So, and what is really special about this bag, why it is a laptop bag, is the lining. And I am using a special fabric for lining the laptop bag. So the lining actually gives purpose to the bag. It is. And it is called Faraday fabric. So it is um, stretch silver fabric. It's um, material uh, elastic polyester. So it means it's lightweight, it's flexible, it's easy to work with. It's really good to use as a lining. And the purpose of this uh, fabric is to block electromagnetic field waves. So when you carry your laptop in the bag, it protects you. And also when you take your computer out of the bag and then place the bag on your lap, then computer on the bag, you have this double layer of this fabric. So that's um, really efficient protection from these harmful EMF waves. So I think that's quite a special um, feature of the bag. You can order that fabric online i will add the link of the fabric that i used uh, when you click on my written pattern link in video description box so you can buy the same and there are different alternatives uh, some of them are more expensive some of them are cheaper you have a choice but this one um, i really like because it's elastic stretchy The back measures about 10 inches wide and 13 inches long and it is meant for a 14 inch uh, laptop. And now uh, what I'm using for the back, first of all the yarn, sugar and cream and this one is called uh, light blue. The, it is a 100% cotton medium weight cat category 4. And this ball has 120 yards in it. So, and I need four of these to um, make the bag. And uh, my yellow bag, 
Uh, that one I made with a different yarn uh, with Bernard Handicrafter Deluxe. It's the same size, same weight. Um, the thing is, I don't know if uh, this one is still available or discontinued. It was hard to get the uh, yarn to complete the ba uh, bag. This one is called Gold and I needed two balls. This one has um, much more in it, 236 yards in one ball. So you can look if you find it because I just like this darker shade of yellow. But uh, Lily Sugar and Cream is really great, sturdy uh, cotton. Uh, and my crochet hook is 4.5 millimeters. And you will need handles. Uh, I will ha add the link to both kinds of uh, handles. You will find them in my... Um, included in my written pattern so um, if you go and click the written pattern link in video description box uh, you can go ahead and, and buy the same handles if you like them and you also need one inch button here then next if you decide to line the back you can use the regular fabric or you can use the Faraday silver fabric like I did. Here's I have a little piece of this. It's uh, really nice and flowy, stretchy and most of all it's the it's really great for these uh, protective features it has. And you'll need uh, tapestry needles You'll need uh, regular sewing needles, craft needles. Uh, the finer needles are for the uh, lining, to stitch the lining. And you need pins to attach the lining first. And scissors. So let's uh, get started with the bag. And uh, we start with slip knot and then chain 41 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and the first round we need to single crochet on both sides of the chain so first we're gonna single crochet in each of these upper loops starting with a second chain from hook so insert hook here make a single crochet and in the next and so on so make 40 single crochets this way And after the last single crochet here, in the last chain, I'm going to turn and now we're going to single crochet in each chain on the opposite, in, in the opposite loop. So insert hook into that same chain and make a single crochet right here, then next. And when you count, you also have, will have uh, 40 single crochets. So do this until the end. And here I did 39 and here's my last one, the chain. So that's 40. And so now um, I have 80 single crochets on the round. And I'm going to end this with a slip stitch in the beginning, first single crochet stitch. The second round, we're going to single crochet in each stitch in back loops only. Uh, we start with one chain. In that same single crochet, the first one that we slip stitched into. So now insert hook through this back loop so not 
these two two of these as usual but only the back loop and make a single crochet one and the next so you'll see these um, two horizontal loops on each stitch so don't insert through both but the back loop three and four and when you if you want to check you can count your stitches need to have total of 80 so do this all around single crochet back loops and I inserted a stitch marker in that first back loop single crochet so it's easier to follow you can do the same and now here I did 79th stitch so here is my last 80th and it looks like there's one more stitch here but it's actually not it's the slip stitch of the last round so just uh, skip this go over that one reach into the first stitch and through the both loops inserting hook make a slip stitch to end this round and the third round is going to be slip stitches in each stitch inserting hook through both horizontal loops so here now we did the last slip stitch into the first stitch and now that's going to count as a stitch if you start counting your stitches so that's the first and so from here we're just going to continue with with slip stitches so that's the one we made number one and then two three four five six seven so just do this around counting the stitches I finished 79 slip stitches here in the next I'm gonna do the last one and now this one here that's the first slip stitch so the last and first but um, now uh, how I want to end this is um, not inserting hook through these loops in front here instead insert hook through this upper one this loop and try to grab the loop back here as well and make a slip stitch like that So that's because uh, round four is now going to be double crochet stitches all around and I'm just uh, sh gonna show you uh, where we need to insert a hook to do them. So from here now chain three. At this point we can remove the stitch marker. Um, these beginning chains they count as the first double crochet will show clearly that that's the beginning of the round so now to show you the next double crochet where it goes so here's my next slip stitch it's these loops are kind of in front here and I want to keep them here for the nice look that's why I'm going to insert hook when you turn you work a little upwards you see two more loops here back here so that's where I'm going to insert my hook to do the double crochet stitch so then these these two loops will remain here in front untouched so here that here's the next one you see these loops in front here also those two loops up here and that's where I do my double crochet so you can see them quite well here you just have to turn your work a little bit up upwards 
and now uh, do the double crochet stitches all around and we'll end this round again together to see the stitch placement Uh, so this is my 79th and here I can do the last one, the 80th. And now to end I will slip stitch in a third beginning chain here. So we have the bottom of the back, looks like a little narrow boat or something and now on fifth round we're going to start the basket weave stitch so first i'm going to chain one that doesn't count as this other as a stitch and now uh, we're going to do four front post double crochet stitches starting with a post of that first beginning chain on previous round. So yarn over, insert hook from front to back around the post, bring it back up here, then yarn over, pull the loop through, and now to the regular double crochet, pull through first two loops and the next two loops. So this is the front post double crochet to the next uh, around the next double crochet yarn over insert hook around the post pull up a loop pull through first two loops pull through remaining two loops the third one do the same around the post of next And one more. Next four stitches are going to be back post double crochets. So instead of yarn over, instead of in inserting hook from front to back, we do the opposite. We insert hook from back to front around the post of next double crochet and going back here on the back side yarn over pull up a loop and then do the double crochet as usual the next again from back to front around the post then yarn over pull through the space here bring up the loop and then we can finish the stitch again third one and one more And now it just repeats. We do four front post double crochets, four back post double crochets all around. So I'm gonna do four front posts again. One, two, three. And four and now back post one two three and four 
Now keep doing this all around and we end this together and start a new round together. I did last back post double crochets here, the four. So here's my beginning chain and beginning front post double crochet. I'm going to slip stitch in the upper loops of the front post double crochet to end. Now, uh, next two rounds, six and seven, will be the same, repeating the fifth. And again, start with one chain. And now we're just going to front post double crochet around each front post double crochet and back post double crochet around each back post double crochet. So, first four front post. One, two, three, and four. And next two, next four back post. One, two, three, four, and then just continue and make two more rounds and then we can continue with the pattern. So this is how it looks now after round seven and now round eight. Uh, we just need to do the opposite. So we're going to do our back post double crochets around each front post double crochet and front double crochet around each back post double crochet. And then repeat this for um, three rounds, eight, nine, ten. So now round eight, it starts the same, chain one. And now just have to do back post. So the few first ones can be a little difficult because it's, it's kind of tight here, but let's see. So that's first, second, here's the third, and the fourth, it gets easier uh, when you do more of these, and now we continue with front post double crochets. So, do one, two, Sometimes I have to start over. That's the third here. And then fourth. It takes me a while too, especially in the beginning. Like as I go al along, it gets uh, easier. Uh, and now continue again in the pack post. Four pack posts here. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and then again four front post here. And now, and then when you finish, you start um, round nine, and the same for ten, tenth round. Then you just do a back post around each back post, front post around each front post. So that's uh, the basket weave pattern. So do uh, eighth, ninth, and tenth rounds, and then we'll continue. And I finished round ten, and now the pattern is going to repeat. So uh, we're going to do again uh, rounds 5, 6, 7, and then 8, 9, 10. And then uh, repeat this until you have um, uh, completed 37 rounds. And so looking at the finished back, uh, I have 11 of these blocks so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and then uh, we can uh, do the edge together and i'm just going to show a little more uh, how i continue this so now round 11, chain one, and now I have to do front post double crochets. And I finished the 11 squares, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And I'm going to show you the two options to make the edge. So depending on uh, what uh, type of handles you have. So my yellow bag has uh, these uh, types of handles that you can uh, insert through the hole. And then they are attached here. So for these types of uh, handles, uh, we need to make the edge and create these holes. So let's do that first. So the edge is going to be six rounds of single crochet stitches. This is my third ball of yarn and I have a little left. I will probably need the fourth one to finish the edge. And the first round of the edge with the handle holes, chain one, single crochet in that same stitch where you did the last slip stitch and now single crochet seven more so total eight here one so one and two three four five six seven and eight and for the whole now chain three and skip next three stitches one two three single crochet in the next fourth now we need to single crochet total of 18 including that first one so one two three so make 18 here and then again chain three and skip three stitches 
one, two, three, single crochet in the next. Now we need total 16. One, two, three. Now I'm on the other side of the back doing the third handle hole chain three and skip three one two three single crochet now 18 again three. for the last handle hole chain three skip one two three and now we have eight more to single crochet to finish the first round four five six seven and eight we can do the second round I'm gonna turn it around uh, first I'm gonna finish with a slip stitch in the beginning single crochet starting second round chain one now single crochet in each stitch in each um seven one two three four five six seven and last stitch the one before the hole we're going to do spike stitch instead of single crochet so that the the whole corners will be stronger so how it works is insert hook knot here for the regular stitch but below that stitch on the previous round in the space here pull up the loop pull up long enough for the current round and just make the stitch as usual that's the spike stitch next single crochet two in the hole three chain space and now we're going to do another spike stitch on the other side of the hole so insert hook here below the stitch space below the stitch pull up the loop and finish the stitch so this is uh, how i do the holes for the handles and uh, now just a single crochet all the way until the last stitch uh, next to the next hole and make a, a spike stitch here two single crochets spike stitch again single crochets and this exactly the same on the other side and then you just need to do four more rounds of single crochet stitches So this is the first option for the edge and now I'm going to show you the second one for the handles that I use for my blue bag. So those are the handles that um, you can actually stitch on the back. And I'm back to where I finished my basket weave uh, pattern. Uh, so chain one single crochet in the same stitch and single crochet one in each stitch around and one side note here i recommend decreasing the stitches on the third and fifth round so on the third round i already did it in the beginning i uh single crochet two together here then i single crochet 38 to the other side and over here again i did two single crochet stitches together so i decreased so i have two less stitches and then the fourth round i just uh, single crocheted so 78 stitches total and now on the fifth i'm gonna show you i'll do the second decrease so i start as usual uh one chain and already here the first two stitches i'm gonna decrease so pull up a loop through the first stitch and also through that second and pull through three loops and hooks that's my decrease two single crochet stitches together and now a 
Okay, let me count. Single crochet now, 37 until the other side. And then we're, we're gonna do the second decrease. And here next I'm gonna do the second decrease, pull up a loop, also pull up loop in the next stitch and pull through three loops. And now just single crochet until the end of round and slip stitch in first. And now we're, we have total of uh, 76 on the round. And round six then we're going to do together uh, to make the buttonhole. And now the last six round of the edge with the buttonhole. So we start as usual with chain, single crochet in the same. Now make 19 single crochet stitches, including the first one. One, two, three, Uh, next, chain 12, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And now single crochet in the next stitch here. And now I'm going to turn so I can now do the single crochet stitches inside the chain loop and I'm going to make 14 in here so 1 2 3 4 5 and that's a good size of uh, buttonhole for my one inch uh, button. Uh, okay, but we're not done yet. So after the last single crochet in the loop, we're going to make a spike stitch in that base single crochet here. So spike stitch just be as before, insert hook in space below this stitch, pull up a longer loop and finish the stitch. And now I can turn over again. And I'm going to now slip stitch in each of these single crochets. One. Two, three, four, and after the last slip stitch here, I'm going to now single crochet in this space here where the buttonhole loop started. So now these the both sides look the same and then just keep making your single crochet stitches one in each and I'm done with the edge I will cut off the yarn and fasten off uh, first, I still need to slip stitch in that beginning single crochet here. And next, I'm going to sew on the handle. So the first thing, I'm going to use my large tapestry needle and poke these holes a little bit because they are quite tight, uh, depending on the handle you 
you have but mine are tight so I'm going to first make them a little bit bigger so my needle because the um, my yarn is quite thick and it just won't come through so if you have the same thing just use the tapestry needle and and prepare these holes make them a little bigger and now I'm going to place one of the handle ends uh, I like it here when you count the third square from the side one two three and starting with these top holes here I already weaved in my yarn on the other side so I'm going to insert it from back to front through the space between first and second row here from the top and then also the hole one of the top holes here and then just uh, go back here and insert needle here so then next is the one here down here okay find the hole easier to look in the back And I finished my first uh, handle here. I'm gonna place that second one in here and repeat the same. And I hope it will be easier now as I already did the first one. So, so repeat this. Uh, uh, on the other side and then make the second handle and I just want to show you uh, to uh, where to attach the button Looks like so it's the best good place to put it here between that second and third round starting from the this one on the edge And when we're all done with that, uh, I'm going to also show you how I sew the lining with that special fabric I talked about. Here um, I have my handles and uh, button attached. And now uh, the next step, I'm ready to add the lining so I'm going to turn the back inside out and so here is my special Faraday uh, fabric nice and stretchy so First, I'm going to attach it with uh, with pins. I'm going to start up here. 
gonna leave some extra fabric here on the sides and I'm going to attach it here right here where the edge starts So, and then I'm going to kind of, because I have this uh, long, narrow piece of the material, I'm going to wrap it around the back. The sides are still open here. I'm going to do them later. So now I have too much here left, so I need to cut my fabric to fit the back.
and I'm ready to start stitching. I have my fine sewing needle and fine thread, trying to match the color of the lining fabric. And I'm going to start in this corner where the side edge and upper edge meet right here. And as I work, I'm always uh, adjusting my pins, sometimes moving them around. This one is just too close right now to my stitching. Okay. And so here. I'm just going to insert my needle through the back crochet stitches and then through the fabric and um, so it's up to you I like to so both this yarn and the fabric are uh, strong and tight so it takes a bit of patience to insert the needle sometimes it's easier sometimes it takes an effort um, so I was saying I I like to put my stitches uh, quite close to each other meaning I'm doing a lot of stitches because that way it's going to look neat and also it's going to be strong enough to put the laptop or books in it so it's not going to unravel. But the stitching is, is uh, itself, it's not uh, difficult. Just take some time to to this uh, upper edge here first, all the way around. And then let's do the edge as well. So I finished the upper edge all around and now I'm here on one of the sides and I'm just gonna stitch down the same way. So all the way down to the corner here. And then do the other side same way. It's always the first few stitches or maybe more than few uh, that take a little bit longer to get a hang of it and then um, as you go along you'll see it gets easier to stitch and a bit faster too so this is how I stitch my lining to make it look nice and uh, let me show you the finished bag. 
So here's my first uh, yellow bag with the finished lining. And here is my finished uh, blue bag. Uh, here's my lining, all stitched and nice. So I hope you have fun making this bag for yourself or as a gift. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, thank you so much for watching and happy crocheting.